Hi guys, you're back with Justin and today we're going to look at two modifications in this video that are going to be performed to this 2022 Honda Rebel 500 Special Edition. Now because this is the 22 model and I believe this applies from 20 and up it has the LED headlight and it has the headlight cowl. Now uh, that's a distinguishing feature between this and previous generations of the bike but uh, I'd like to mix it up and as you can see here I've got the genuine Diablo headlight cowl which has been purchased from K-Speed. So um, the look fit and finish is exactly like all of the other K-Speed parts that I've purchased and installed which you'll see in my list of YouTube videos and when you buy it from K-Speed it gets shipped by EMS um, Air Freight came from Thailand to where I am on the east coast of Australia comes in uh, the typical white packaging foam and then in a sealed bag with the genuine Diablo sticker on it you also get um, a uh, packet that has the sort of frame that holds the headlight cowl in. All right, so I've just opened the package um, that contained the bracket and uh, it's got one bracket, four bolts and four um, threaded rubber inserts. So remove that one off. first. I'm just going to start off by removing this one and this one. And again, on this side, there's two here. Looks like they might be a five millimeter Allen key. Okay guys, so that was really easy to remove those four um, five mil hex bolts, uh, two from either side. And they, were, they weren't on tight at all. I was very easily able to remove them with a standard Allen key tool. I couldn't use the Allen key leverage set that I like to usually use because the indicators were in the way, but I didn't need to. The headlight cowl from these the bolts from this bracket. I think the next thing I'm going to try and do is, is actually remove this plastic cover from the headlight itself. So again, it looks like it's uh, two five mil bolts on either side to remove it. So now that I've removed these four bolts to remove that cover, the next thing I need to look at is just trying to get this frame off. And the reason I need to get this part off is because the Diablo headlight cowl can't fit because it, it'll foul here and it's just in the way. So the next step is to remove the 5mm Allen um, headed bolt that is up there. And so that's what this one looks like. Now the next step is is a very hard bolt and if you have a look at people's different videos online the bolt which is at the base here is super hard to remove so people have commented that it does have Loctite in it from factory and as you can see that's the bottom bolt there so um, it is hard to get to the first problem is that you even need to have a super long Allen key and if it's just a little bit too long then you can't get leverage so that's the case for me so then I've just gone to my cheapy set and um, the next part next problem you've got is that there is a line here in the way and there's only this much leverage to get in there now it's super tight I've tried moving it with my hand and it won't budge so what you can do then is you can try getting a pair of vice grips putting it on the handle and basically you're trying to make the extension for this allen key as long as possible if you don't have that or the way i prefer to do it is that you can put a solid um, ring end spanner over the allen key like that and suddenly that gives you this much leverage i'm going to put the phone down now and do it with two hands 
basically I'm going to use my left hand to push down on the Allen key to make sure it's seated in the, in the hole itself, whilst I use my right hand to push against the frame slowly, and hopefully that works loose. Okay, so I was able to break that bolt with the spanner the first time, but then you've got to unwind that much thread to get this bolt out so that you can loosen that bracket. So this side's done. I've now just got to get that lower left side done. It takes, takes quite a while to turn because you can only do quarter turns at a time before you've got to then reposition the Allen key back into this bolt. And it is pretty long, as you can see there. So it's probably got about oh, two and a half centimeters of thread. And when you're only turning a eighth to a quarter of a turn at a time, you, this really is a job for a person that's got um, small to medium sized hands. If, you've, if you're uh, a large fellow or girl trying to do this, I recommend calling in a friend to help you. All right guys, so on the right side of the bike here, as you can see, I've turned the handles all the way to the left and that's because in my case, the amount of torque that was put on the bolt meant that the only position, or the position that it was sitting in was very close to the frame. And uh, if you've got the forks forward here, you've just got no leverage with a spanner on top. So yeah, just a little tip there. Just make sure you've got the handles all the way to the left so that when you go to remove this right side, you've got room to um, get this Allen key out. So as you can see, I'm just doing the tiniest little turns. So this is probably, this is a lot better than the left side, but yeah, it's, literally a quarter of a turn at a time. So happy times <laughs> to get this bolt out. But finally, once this is done, this steel bracket will be off. All right, so a few minutes later, I've now got that bolt out and I've just lifted the um, bracket that is just here um, away from that area. I just need to lift this bolt out here as well so I can get, so I've actually got the bolt out so I can actually get this cover out there you go okay so there is the mount for the OEM headlight cowl for the 2021-2022 year so right now the headlight is just dangling there because those bolts aren't in so I'm just going to put those bolts back in and then I've realized that this um, Diablo um, headlight cow mount doesn't actually mount to the back of a headlight. As you can see, there are no bolts there. It actually mounts to the back of the instrument cluster. So, so now that I've fitted the bracket and the genuine Honda accessories bracket for the USB charger underneath this instrument panel, I've just got them loosely in place so that I can just sort of wiggle it around if I need to. Now, um, when you go to install the headlight cowl onto this bracket, you need to have these rubber grommets from the back in, and that's because it's got a little stopper here. So as you tighten down the headlight cowl to this, it can't then just pop out either way. It's actually got a stopper to it. So parts are just falling on the floor now, but the next step is yes, to put all four of these in and then put the cowl on and screw into it. So let's resume once I've got that on. So I've got it secured now guys. So all four of these bolts are in and all two of these bolts are in as well. And because the bracket from um, K-Speed has sort of this much elongation, you can sort of slide the cover up and down. And I found that if I had it sort of all the way to the bottom and just probably about five mil up, then that was the right fit for me. So as you can see, I've got it perfectly centered there. And when you look at the pictures on their website, the headlight doesn't actually come out to sit right flush with this mount here. It is actually sort of two centimeters in depth. Um, I kind of wish that the headlight did sit more flush with it, but it's not necessarily an issue with it being backwards. I just wanted to show you what it looks like there 
from the front. So it is not a windshield in any way. It is a headlight cover, but it, that because there is an air gap there um, all the way around, it basically is just like having a pre-2020 bike with no headlight cowl at all. Um, in terms of on the 2122, because it comes with the headlight cowl from factory, um, you don't have that bracket anymore. And so the bracket um, has a welded nut in there in position. So right now these indicators are loose. So when you go to put the bolt back in there, you will actually have to put a nut. You have to go to your spare parts and just uh, box and just get two nuts to tighten this clamp back on. So I'll just do a walk around now, slow walk around so you can see the fit. Just putting the phone down at headlight cover at that level. So it's a close fit, but it doesn't um, hit the genuine Honda accessory uh, mount or any part of the accessory socket. So yay. Um, these uh, cables for the clutch um, and the brake do touch but it's not um, it doesn't look to me like it is causing any necessarily painful issues for the bike so I'm now sitting on the bike just giving you an idea of what it looks like. Now I'm a rider, I've got it at my head height. I am 170 centimetres tall. Alright, so that's really great. So now I'm going to move on to the install of the uh, replacement um, footrests in black. So I think they look a lot better. I've used a um, black temp which I've been using, black paint which I've been using in all of my videos which is the Jupicolor high heat with ceramic black and you certainly don't need a high temp black paint for um, this application because it's just underneath the sole of your foot but it is a long lasting paint and it's not a shiny one it's a matte one and so because that area is going to get dark and I don't want it to stick out when the whole rest of a bike is like a, a matte to a satin sort of color. That's why I've used that color because uh, in actuality it actually looks like the exhaust black, the OEM exhaust black sort of color once it dries. So underneath this brake, or oh sorry, this, this footrest, there is a M10 bolt and I'm just going to use an M10 to loosen that bolt uh, or nut, whatever it is, so that I can then take this part off. All right, so I've just used an impact wrench. It was a little bit hard with a uh, adjustable spanner, I've got to say. Um, so now that I've undone that, I can simply just pull this straight up. So this does actually have a metal bracket inside of it. It's just slotted in there, but otherwise it's a big piece of soft rubber. All right, so um, it still needs more time to dry. So I've just come around to the driver's side. And again, as you can see, it's just got the same 10 mil bolt. So I'm just gonna loosen that with the impact driver. And let's see what this okay, side looks so like. So that was easy to get out again. Same thing again, just lifting that straight up. Again, it's got a bracket on this side. It needs the metal bracket, so it's got a thread that the bolt can go through. We won't be needing to reuse that though. So again, it looks the same here. So when those parts dry, I'll be able to slot them back on and bolt them down. All right, so now it's dry and as you can see, I've just placed that cover straight on. Now on this um, uh, right foot one, it went on really easily, but the left side is a bit tight. So I just thought I'd come here first. So in of the washer, bolt straight down. Then underneath you can see you've got that much room to tighten this washer and nut. The nut has a nylon insert in it 
so it's not going to come loose on you. Okay, so now it's in place. As you can see, I've just tightened up that washer and nut. Um, so it's nice, nice and secure. It's not going to move at all. Let's go back to this left side now and just figure out why it's a little bit tight. So I can see here that it's the exact same part. I tried fitting left to right. They're both exactly the same. So basically this outer part fits in, but it's just a tiny bit tight when trying to push it in. So I'm going to try with some might to push down with two hands here, just making sure that I don't tip the bike over. And if I yeah can't get that to work, then I may have to end up hitting this a little bit with a hammer to bring this in. But let's see if that's necessary or not. All right, so I didn't have to um, hammer the inside at all. I simply just placed a towel over the top and then a mallet, and then I just hit it, hit it down on that inner side. So as you can see, the hole is there and it's perfect. So I'll go ahead and tighten that up now and we'll take a final look at the complete install. All right guys, so whilst I'm just waiting for this to dry because I've just um, decided to paint the bolt as well because I didn't like how it was um, yeah, standing out all grey. I decided that I'll do a extra install for this video which is the side engine covers from K-Speed as well. So again, it arrives in a plastic bag, the white covering and then you've got your part inside and it's a sealed bag. So I have cut this open when it arrived probably about a month ago. Let's have a look what's inside when we unbag it. So here's the parts out of the bag and just like usual the fit and finish of the part is really good no defects at all noticed in it it comes with the double-sided tape inside and it is of course labeled diablo on this one it comes with the same adhesion promoter that was found on the inner side of the Diablo tank cover. Now, um, I'll just put up on the screen the picture of this installed on the bike on the kspeed.com website. So what these parts are is that they are a side engine cover. Now, um, if you have a look at the way it's taped, it's meant to grab onto parts um, on the outer side. So it's meant to tape onto this bar, this bar, and somehow here. Now from factory, my bike actually has this rubber cover on here. And uh, that looks like it's a, it's taped on. Now, I don't know if that's uh, necessarily a bad looking thing. I've I would just see that as something that's a bit protective. But in order to install this part, as you can see, that rubber part has got to go. As well, I need to unbolt the front engine cover so that I can slot this part into there. So, that's... right, so that is just a double side taped on part, and it's just a simple rubber protector. For the frame so i'm just going to use my hands now to peel this back and if it doesn't come off very easily i just get a little bit of wd-40 but it seems like it's gonna come off within about 30 seconds all right so i've just uh, wound out this front uh, top screw on the diablo engine cover um, and this one a slight bit not as much because it's difficult once you, if you were to unwind these bolts, you wouldn't be able to line up the radiator um, and the cover, this cover, properly because everything's in the way. So I've just been careful not to. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just applying the adhesion promoter. It's got a strong glue-like um, smell to it, but its job is to remove any oils and contaminants on the surface that you're trying to apply to just to show you that's uncleaned and then this area is cleaned 
So yeah, it does definitely take off all of the um, dirty stuff so that you can apply your taped part on. All right, so here's the part here, and I've just got a simple pair of um, tweezers that you would usually find in your bathroom. And what you'll find usually when you go to um, remove these um, double-sided tape parts is that if you use your nail to try and undo these covers, then you end up screwing the double-sided tape part up a lot. Now I'm not saying it's perfect to um, take these off but it definitely makes the job a lot easier and uh, yeah so as you can see first time for the last two took a couple of goes on the first one. So now I'm going to simply just use the hairdryer to um, heat up this tape area. All right, so that's enough now. Temperature rise for me to slot this part in, so I'll just use two hands.
link through Facebook. Just make sure that you close Facebook, go into YouTube, search for Tweaked or search for Juzzy Evo X, that's J-U-Z-Z-I-E Evo X, which I'll pop on the screen and you'll be able to subscribe to my channel there and see further content for the Honda Rebel 500 and the Lancer Evolution 10. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Bye for now.